uh, related to virtual cloud network service. My name is uh, Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we'll look into security list and network security groups, the two mechanisms by which you can enforce security within the virtual cloud network service. Now, we, in the previous modules, we have already looked at security list. When we were running a few demos, uh, we actually uh, went through these and we opened uh, certain ports um, for some of the subnets uh, and instances, but let's look into this in more details now. So as you can see here, I have a VCN with 10.0.0.0 slash 16 address space, and I have three subnets. These can be regional, or if you're in a multi-AD region, these can be specific to ADs. To keep the picture clean, uh, I don't have the ADs uh, shown here, but, but these definitely are running uh, in whether it's a single AD region or a multi AD region. So what is a security list? A security list is a common set of firewall rules associated with a subnet and applied to all instances launched inside the subnet. Security lists consist of rules that specify the types of traffic allowed in and out of the subnet. So if you see here, and let me just use the highlighter here. If you can see here, uh, there's a security list here. There's a security list here and there's a security list here. First thing to notice here is the security list is applied at the subnet level, right? Um, so uh, so that's that's important. Uh, second thing is if you see the rules itself, all the three security lists have the same rule. They can be different rules. Uh, it basically says ingress, meaning incoming traffic. Uh, I'm allowing um, all traffic uh, come at port 80. Uh, and egress, meaning outgoing traffic, I'm only allowing traffic to this particular subnet for port 1521, right? This is again a sample uh, entries. And of course, your situation would be different depending on uh, de depending on what your requirements are. Now to use a security list with a particular subnet, you associate the security list with the subnet either during the creation process or later. We saw this again in several demos. Uh, when we were creating a subnet, we could, in we could uh, attach uh, our um, uh, 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 security list uh, if you already have one or you could use the default one you could always change that later on as well security list apply to a given instance whether it's talking with another instance in the vcn or a host outside the vcn so this is really important if these two guys want to talk to each other you would still need to open the security list here and here otherwise they cannot communicate uh, with each other which totally makes sense because it's 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 enforcing more security um, otherwise it would be um, otherwise you would be talking about a completely different uh, security model here and then you can decide whether a given rule is stateful or stateless uh, we'll talk about this uh, in in a, in a little bit more detail in in a couple of slides so uh, that was all about security list and something which we have seen in the demos now let's talk about another security mechanism, which is called Network Security Group or NSG. Uh, NSG provides a virtual firewall like security list for a set of cloud resources that, that all have the same security posture. So what do I mean by that? Uh, well, what I mean by that is NSG is applied. You have like security list. It consists of a set of rules that apply only to a set of virtual network interface cards of your choice in a single VCN. So as you can see here, there's an instance, there's a there's a VNIC here, and there's an instance, there's a VNIC here, there's an instance, there's a VNIC here. Uh, this instance and this instance have the same network security group. And you can see there NSG1A, which says that I'm allowing port 80 uh, uh, traffic on incoming on port 80. This guy here has a different security uh, um, uh, network security group, which says that I'm allowing TCP uh, port 22. So I can SSH into this particular instance. So now what you are literally doing is even though these two instances are in the same subnet, literally you have different uh, security uh, list and rules for them. Uh, and you can allow different kind of traffics, a uh, different kind of traffic to these instances, even though they are in the same subnet. How is it different than security list? If it was security list, both these instances needed the same security posture, meaning either the port 80 you would have to open and it would open for all instances or you would have to lock down port 80 or in case if you want to open port 22, 
it would be open or closed for both instances because remember security list is applied at the subnet level and all the instances in that subnet share the same security posture so currently a bunch of services support a network security group and this list is always expanding so always check with documentation as to where we are now there is another difference between this and nsg and security list when you are writing rules for an nsg you can specify an nsg network security group as the source or destination uh, contrast this with security list rules where you can specify only a cider and you can obviously do service for both of them uh, if in case you are going to like a, a service gateway uh, but you in this case you typically would always go with cider uh, but in case of nsg you can specify another nsg as the source or destination so it just makes life a little bit more easier uh, and it lets leads to you know like more complex scenarios you could you could support now our recommendation is to use network security groups uh, because uh, because of the precise reason i just talked about uh, with, when you are using network security uh, groups you can separate the vcn subnet architecture from your application security requirements like i was saying here right both our instances are in the same subnet uh, but they have different security requirements right so you could you could do that so it gives you a little bit more flexibility now you could use security list alone like we have done in the demos you could use network security groups alone or you could use both together as you can see in this particular uh, picture here so it has a couple of security list and it has a couple of network security groups if you want security rules that you want to enforce for all vnics in a vcn all instances in a vcn the easiest solution is to put the rules in one security list and then associate that security list with all subnets in the vcn pretty straightforward we have done this in 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 couple of uh, demos uh, if you remember we had a demo where we we had a web host instance and a bastion instance and we said you know just for simplicity of the demo we want the same uh, um, uh, security for rules for both of those right in in real cases you would separate them out uh, but in our demo we did that and we used the same security list uh, for for both uh, uh, for both those instances now if you choose to use both security list and network security groups this is very important the set of rules that apply to a given vnic is the union of these items it's very important it gets confusing it's always the union of these items meaning union of security list and network security group so let's see what that means what this means is whatever security rules you have in the security list uh, with the associated with the vnix subnet meaning the the instance which is in the subnet so that applies the security rules in all the network security groups they apply and a packet is allowed in or out if rule in any of the relevant list and groups allow the traffic so for example if security list has port 80 open and and network security group doesn't have port 80 open and you apply both of them your traffic would still be allowed because port 80 is open so the easiest way to do this is if you have both you are using both and you want traffic to be not allowed then the easiest way to do is not have rules in either of them if you have a specific rule meaning a specific protocol specific destination or source uh, um, and a particular port specific port make sure you check both or if you don't want that complexity just pick one and use one so either use security list or use network security groups otherwise you will be troubleshooting situations where it's always a union and the packet is allowed if any of those rules allow the traffic so it's really important straightforward but you need to keep in mind now there are two things we didn't uh, talk about earlier one is the stateful security uh, rules and stateless what do these mean so stateful basically means that if uh, instance receives uh, traffic uh, matching the stateful ingress rule the response is automatically uh, is tracked and automatically uh, allowed regardless of any egress rules uh, and vice versa right so what do i mean by that so here look there's a port 80 we have been looking into this example it's a stateful rule so you say source can be anything all ip addresses protocol tcp source port can be anything i don't care destination port is 80 so the traffic is coming in here right because it is stateful this traffic is automatically allowed 
So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to write an egress rule. The traffic is obviously always allowed. Default security list rules are always stateful. And so when you create a rule like this in the console, and we'll go and, and look into this, uh, what it's basically saying is this is stateful. So there is no like a like a drop down or something. It says source side there is any address. Uh, protocol TCP source port, I don't care. It might be my laptop, it might be my phone, it might be some other endpoint. And destination is, is port 80. Now, if port 80 allows the traffic in, it would also allow the traffic out. So if you go into the browser, you put the IP address, you can see uh, a page come up, right? You're sending the traffic in and you're receiving the traffic out. You don't have to write an egress rule specifically. Stateless, stateless is just the opposite. Uh, in stateless, response traffic is not automatically allowed. To allow the response traffic for a stateless ingress rule, you must create a corresponding stateless egress rule, right? Similar example as before, uh, you allow traffic at port 80. Now this traffic is, is not allowed if you don't have this rule. So you have to write this uh, rule explicitly and you have to say that now my destination cider is can be any IP. My source is now 80 because my traffic is coming from here and destination port can be anything. If you don't write this rule, you will basically have traffic come in, but traffic would not go out. So if you do that, let's say with a web server, you put the address in there on your browser and you would not get a response page back, right? Um, <clears throat> basically what is happening here is there is a mechanism called connection tracking. And in case of stateless, uh, you basically are saying that we don't want connection tracking, right? What's the advantage of this? These are better for scenarios where you have large number of connections, right? Because at end of day stateful, you are tracking your connections. So there's a limit to how many connections you can have, right? So if you have scenarios where you have like a load balancer, you have big compute, you have lots of connections, it's better to go with uh, stateless. Uh, of course, the number is pretty big, uh, but it's it's uh, good to go with stateless in, in those cases. So with that, let me just quickly jump to the console and show you a couple of uh, quick demos. So until now, we have been doing uh, these bunch of these demos and uh, we have a web server, we have a bastion server and, and all that. And uh, we showed you a demo where we had, uh, where we used security list uh, without, you know, we had not covered security list by that time. Uh, but let's go and look into some more details right now, right? So it's a web server, pretty straightforward. I'm able to access this web server. How am I able to access this web server? Of course, it's in a public subnet. Uh, it has internet gateway. If those two things were not there, then of course I could not access it. And a third, it also has a public IP. If those, th again, it didn't have a public IP. There was no way I could bring it up in my uh, browser, right? Really straightforward. Now, if I go into my uh, demo VCM, for instance, lives in one of the subnets, I can see security list here, right? And the first thing I would show here is the security list has traffic open for port 80, right? Really straightforward, we did this earlier. Let me just remove this uh, port 80, right? Now, if I come back here and now if I click uh, connecting, uh, bring up the IP address, you can see there is a button here which says connecting and it doesn't come up, right? There's a wheel here, spinning wheel here. Basically, it means that I cannot access that instance anymore, right? Because my traffic was coming at port 80. Uh, I stopped that rule. I removed that rule. So the packets are black holing, right? Even though internet gateway is allowing, and you can see that the site cannot be reached, right? So if I go back to my slides, on the demo, if you see this particular slide, uh, my internet gateway is, is there. My my internet gateway is there. Let me just uh, just like that. So my internet gateway is here, right? This is fine. I'm able to bring up. There's this has a public IP here, so there is an IP address here, right? I can bring it up, but because my port 80 is not open here, I cannot get the traffic in, right? It's really straightforward, uh, nothing complex. Now, let me go back and and create, instead of a network, uh, instead of a security list, let me create a network security group because we have not used this until now. So it's rather straightforward. Uh, I, first, I need to provide a name. So I'd say this is NSG, um, let's say NSG1 or NSG for demo vision. And then right here, it says uh, stateless or stateful, same as security list, in, in ingress, egress, again, same as security list. Uh, and right here, you could see, I could specify a CIDR, I could specify a service. So this is for cases where I want to go to the service uh, gateway. 
for things like if I want to use the object storage or all public services, all services in this particular region, it's a regional thing here. Or I could use another network security group. Now, in case of security list, this option doesn't show up, right? You cannot use another security list as the source or the destination. So I pick CIDR, that's fine. I could say use all IP addresses. Um, IP protocol, I would say TCP is fine. Source can be anything and destination is port 80. So literally I'm doing the same thing, but now I'm going to use it through a network security group, not through uh, a security list. So if I go back to my uh, uh, compute instance, this is the web uh, server we have been using. I need to go to the VNIC and then I need to attach this network security group to the VNIC, right? We covered this in the slides. So if I bring up my training compartment, I just created this uh, this network security group, right? Now I'll save my changes. And now if I go back to the browser and I hit refresh, you can see that I can get the page back, right? So literally what we did is we removed the security list and we created a network security group. We attached it to the VNIC and now I can see my, uh, my I can bring up my, my web server, right? So hopefully this gives you a quick uh, overview of how security lists work, uh, how network security groups work. Those are two flavors of virtual firewalls, uh, which you can use to enforce uh, security in your VCNs. Uh, uh, thank you for joining this uh, module. If you have time, join the next uh, lecture where we talk about some of the uh, features related to DNS, uh, and then we uh, put all these things uh, together. Thank you. Hey, welcome.